Hello guys, we are back with our next lecture. In this lecture, let us go through system modeling with UML. So in one of our lectures, like when we are discussing about a unified process model, I think I introduced you about unified modeling language, right? So that is nothing but UML. Okay, so basically you will be representing the whole project design in terms of this UML diagrams guys. So basically just the developer the, or the coding guy or the coding developer once he watches or once he observes these UML diagrams carefully he'll be understanding many things like how to code and what to code, what are the functions, what are the methods and what are the variables that he should use and everything he'll be getting an idea guys. So that is the main reason why UML is a powerful language or powerful designing module for mod for modeling guys okay so uml unified modeling language it provides the set of uh, diagrams that can be used for analysis and design at system as well as at the software level so uml standard language for uh, writing software blueprint so basically for uh, civil engineers they will be using cad software and many other softwares like right for that so similarly for our software we will be using uml software or UML for software blueprints okay so UML is a modeling language which yields an understanding of the system okay so we are having multiple types also guys multiple diagrams object diagram class diagram use case diagram component diagram deployment diagram interaction diagram in interaction we are having sequence and collaboration and state space diagram in state space diagram we are having activity and state chart diagram okay okay so now let us first go through use case diagram guys okay Okay, these are all the types guys. Okay, so now let us go through use case. So basically use case diagrams. Okay, so use case diagrams. Use case diagrams contains actor and use cases guys. So guys, the use case diagram is one of the simplest diagram guys. So just by observing the diagram, you can understand that which actor is interacting with which components and what is the other side of it also. Okay, so we'll be going through the example. Don't worry. So if you want an example, I'll be just showing it now itself. So okay, here there is a customer. He is requesting or requirement details he will be checking and he will be calling the salesman and he will be checking for status and he will be informing it or the customer can place order directly he will be placing order and the supervisor will checking it and he will be, check, he'll be updating the stocks and he will be doing the payments like that. So basically you can draw some simple diagrams guys if you want a simpler diagram just give me a second guys. Okay hello guys okay let us continue so this will be a simpler diagram for you so basically a customer can order for food right so he will be using this function or this module you can saw that activity to order the food so the order he will be giving for waiter so waiter will be collecting that order and he will be delivering the food order so basically he will be delivering the food order to this module and this module will send it to the kitchen so the kitchen guy will be collecting it or it will be going to the kitchen so once the, the food order is ready the waiter will again collect it and he will be doing the food service for the customer and again the manager will be informed about this uh, bill and he will be generating the bill and he will be generating it to the customer. So you will be just uh, drawing the flow guys okay. Guys we will be discussing about these things in detail like in the next unit we will be discussing about everything like in detail like how, what is what and how we are using everything. So this unit also this is just a basic introduction okay so don't worry about that. Okay similarly we are having class diagrams in the next unit only guys so don't worry. So class diagrams. So class diagrams are nothing but so I hope everyone knows a class. What is a class? Class is a collection of object. Sorry. Class is a collection of methods and functions, right? Methods, variables and functions. You can say methods and functions are the same. So we are having the variables and functions, right? Yes. So basically class included the, in, include the identification of candidate classes and it shows the their responsibilities and collaboration. So basically it also represents the relation between those classes. Okay, so if we take a small example of a customer again ordering some food or anything. So basically customer what it is it could be a class right. So customer could be a class. So each and every customer will have a name and will also be indicated with a location. And the operations that he can do are nothing but send order and receive order. Okay, so customer is the class name and these are nothing but the variables or you can say okay you can say variable simply. So and these are nothing but the functions or methods. So in this way we will be representing guys. So this is nothing but a class. So it is a class. So if you connect them and if you write the relationship between them. So that is called as class diagram. Guys we will be discussing about this 1 is to n. That is nothing but 1 to n relation and n to 1 relation. And we will be discussing them in our next unit guys. When we are discussing what class diagrams in detail. Okay. 
so basically you can assume here order is related to customers right so that's the reason why order is related to customers similarly inside orders there are two different orders guys that is nothing special order and normal order okay so in that way you will be you will be writing so this is the main class and these two are below it so we can be calling these two as subclasses okay so now let us go through the next diagram that is nothing but sequence diagram so basically sequence diagram just shows you the interaction between the components guys sorry like if a message started here so where it is going and where it is hitting and again where it is continuing like that you will be indicating the state sequence diagram so a sequence diagram is a kind of interactive diagram that focuses on sequential ordering of the messages so how they are sent and how they are how everything occurs we will be showing there guys okay okay so it shows the sequence of steps during implementation of some procedure okay so if we take a small example so assume there is an actor and he is trying to log in into a login form so we are having user management form and registration form also so assume initially he will be keeping a request so then the login page will be displayed after that he will be entering his login details then validation will occur so if the entered details are correct he will be sent to the details and he will be registering for the form and he will be getting the acknowledgement in this way so here what i what we are trying to say guys here we are explaining about the flow of the pattern how the path so it all started with the request and it ended with the acknowledgement so in this way the path how we are going to follow is nothing but the sequence diagram okay similarly we are having state space diagram guys so the state space diagram from the name it's sorry it's state chart diagram or state space diagram also they'll be calling calling okay the diagram shows the states transitions events entries like a flow chart simply you can say it is like a flow chart guys so if you observe here only you can just directly say so i think this is for printing a document we wrote an example right a printer so initially you will be starting or you might be in an ideal state so there are two things okay so waiting for printed command so until you will be waiting for print command so one print one print command is given you will be start printing so once printing is started you will check for available pages if there are any available pages to print you will print it else you will end it directly so and you will continue until this once document ended you will be ending it okay or you will be automatically checking for if there are papers are out of if the number of papers are out or the number of pages are not enough to print then we will be checking for the end of the document and you will be papering out so and then you will be inserting the paper and you will be again continuing with this okay if there is any issue guys if this, this will start if there is any issue okay okay so now let us go through collaboration diagram so collaboration is diagram is nothing but it is the relationship between the objects and their relationship so we will be setting up the relationship between the objects and the and their relationship we will be maintaining so here we are having the object called login system authentication system and and student database so what is the relation between these things so initially login it will be sending the login details and authentication will be checking the details right check the details it will be check sorry it will be, it should be this way guys it will be checking the details and after that it will be returning the result okay the flow we will be writing here so the next one is nothing but activity diagram activity diagram you can clearly say that it is nothing but a flow chart guys simply so it it explains about the flow of the flow of the code guys it will be explaining in this way so if you want to send a mail or read a mail you will be starting it that is nothing but you will be opening your mail then you will be reading your mail and you will be closing your mail guys i am just giving you an introduction here because we'll be discussing about these things in our later lectures okay okay similarly we are having object diagram so object diagrams i told you we are having class diagram so you might be having a question that how, are there any object diagrams yes there are so it represents the static design the view of the system so basically if there is an object order 1 so what is it having will be represented in this way guys so order 1 is having 12 and inside order one we are having again normal order that is nothing but the order number of the normal order in that way similarly component diagram so component diagrams are used to describe the work of the system component they represent static implementation view of the system so they are in this way guys they will be in this way so they will be just showcasing you the relationship between them so customer will order or an order belongs to a customer in that way similarly deployment diagram so deployment diagram is nothing but the last diagram where you will be representing the components guys so representing how the components are deployed in hardware not only that they are represented statically deployment view of the system so it will be in this way simple diagram guys we'll be discussing about these diagrams again in our next lecture so there is nothing to worry okay so i hope you got some basic idea right like say what are the diagrams what are the eight different diagrams we discussed about all the diagrams but i didn't give you so much uh, information but i just gave you some introduction okay
okay so in the next lecture we are going to start the main process of requirement gathering that is nothing but requirement engineering so let us meet in the next lecture thank you thanks for watching